Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create a status column in a SharePoint list. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, in this tutorial specifically, we're going to look at how you can create several different types of status columns then we're going to look at how you can make those status columns visual by using no code conditional formatting. Now that includes changing the background color of status column cells, adding icons to those statuses. And then we're going to end off by looking at how you can make those status columns even more visual by using JSON syntax. Now specifically, we're going to look at how you can implement a red, green, and yellow traffic light status column, and how you can also create a bar chart that visualizes the percentage complete for a specific task if you are doing task tracking. Now let's go ahead and let's check it out. All right, now to add a status column to a SharePoint list, you want to click on the Add Column dropdown, and next you want to click on Choice. So in this first example, we are just going to create a basic status column that is a choice type column. So we'll go ahead and call this status. Next, you want to scroll down and you want to add the different states or status values into these choice options. So you can just click into these pills here and you can go ahead and put in your states. Now I'll just add backlog, work in progress, and then I'll put one more that is completed. Now you also have the option of changing the color of these options by just clicking on the little color palette icon. Now doing that is gonna bring up this list of options here. So I'll just go ahead and change this one to this color here and I'll go ahead and make completed green. Now if you wanna add an additional state or value here in this choice type column, you can just click on the add choice button and that's going to bring up another option and I'll just go ahead and add canceled to this list of choices. Now you can also rearrange these different status values by hovering your cursor slightly to the left of the choice pill and just dragging the option into the position that you want it to appear. Now I'll just go ahead and put the canceled back. So my status values are backlog, work in progress, completed, canceled in that order. Now, if you want to delete a status value, you can just go ahead and click on this little X here, and you can see as I hover my cursor over it, it says delete this choice. Now, I'll go ahead and I will scroll down. Now, you can click into the More Options button, and you'll see here you have the option to display this status column as a drop-down menu. You could also have it display as radio buttons. If you wanted users to be able to add multiple states, which is atypical, you could toggle this on. If you wanna make this required, again, you can toggle this next option on. And then I always recommend just toggling off this last option. Now I'll go ahead and click Save. And you can see here that that status column has been added. Now I'll click Edit in Grid View. And if I click into my status column, you can see here that I can easily select from these different options. So I'll go ahead and select Backlog and then I'll go ahead and select work in progress, et cetera. So that's how to create a basic status column in a SharePoint list. Next, we're going to look at how you can format your status column and specifically the different status values to make it stand out and to make it a little bit easier to identify which state the items or records in your list are in at any given point in time. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and look at how you can make your status column stand out. And there are a few different ways to do this. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you wanna click on the dropdown to the right of your status column, and you wanna click on the column settings dropdown. Next, you wanna click on format this column. Now you'll notice here that you have a few different options as to how you can format this column. The first option is to change the background color of the cells. So I'll go ahead and click on background colors, and then I'll go ahead and click on edit styles. 
Now you can see here, essentially what this does is it allows you to change the background of the cell for each value. So you can see here, it says if status is backlog, the background will be set to blue. If status is work in progress, the background will be set to green, etc. Now, if you wanna change the appearance, you can go ahead and click on the little A with the pencil icon. And this is going to bring up some color options. And if you click on more styles, you can actually specify your own specific design. So you can change the appearance of the font in terms of its size. You can apply font formatting. You can change the color of the text and the fill. And if you scroll down, you can even apply icons. Now I'll go ahead and change the fill color just by clicking on that option. And I will make this a lighter blue. And I'll go ahead and change the text color and I'll make this black. And if I scroll down, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and select one of these options here. So I'll just select the up arrow, for example, and you'll notice that I can even change the color of this icon. So I'll go make this red by selecting that option. And if you wanna change the alignment of that icon, you can go ahead and do that as well. Now I'll just scroll up and so you can see it's added that arrow. And again, if I change the alignment left, it's going to put that arrow on the left-hand side. So background color allows you to customize the background of the cell for your specific options. Now I'll go ahead and click save and I'll click close. And so you can see here uh, that the background is kind of highlighted. And if I were to add additional status values, you can see here that the background again is a different color. So that's one way that you can make your status values stand out. Now, next, we're going to look at a different way to format the column. So again, you want to click on the status dropdown and you want to click on column settings and then format this column. And next, we'll look at the choice pills. So this essentially allows you to customize the actual status options themselves. So if you click on edit styles, you can see here again, similar menu if status is backlog. And this time it's referring to the actual little oval that the text is captured in. So you wanna go ahead and click on the A with the pencil icon and click on more styles. And again, same idea, you can change the color palette of your choice pill. So you can see as I click on that color palette, it's actually changing the color within the oval. You can change the font, customize that to meet your specific requirements. And again, you can also apply these different icons if you wanted to. So I'll just go ahead and select the progress icon and I'm gonna go ahead and click save and I'm gonna click close. And so you can see here that I was able to customize the actual choice pill for that specific option and you can do that to all of the different options to help make those status values stand out. All right, now there's one additional way that you can make your status column stand out, and that is by formatting the column using JSON syntax. So JSON is a type of syntax or you know code, if you will, and you can actually grab pre-built code that is specifically designed to add different visualizations to your SharePoint list now I've included a really useful link in the description below that you can look at and you can actually see some of these pre-built visualizations. And I'm also going to be including the specific links to the ones that I demo here so that you can also just go grab that syntax and apply it in your SharePoint list. Now, what I've done here is I've changed my status column to display three different options, red, green, and yellow. Now we're gonna use some pre-built syntax to make that status column display red, green, and yellow circles, okay? Now often status, especially for tasks or projects may be displayed as sort of red, green, or yellow. So this is a good visualization that you might want to implement to make your list stand out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on that dropdown to the right of the status column, and we're gonna click on column settings, and we're gonna click on format this column. And we're gonna to scroll to the very bottom here and we're gonna click advanced mode. Now what you're going to do is you're going to put your cursor into this input box and you're gonna delete everything that's in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste the code that I've found from the internet into this box. 
Now, just a little bit of a note, I did not write this syntax. Again, full credit goes to the author of the article who I've linked in the description below. So if you head over there, check it out, maybe add a comment and throw that author some kudos. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And you can see here it said column format saved. Now I'm just going to close out of this and you can see here that my status column has now changed from those little choice pills to simple red, green, and yellow circles. And if I click edit in grid view and I click into this status column, you can see here that instead of selecting those options, I'm actually just able to select from these um, little circles here. So this is an example, one of many in terms of how you can use JSON syntax to apply visualizations to your SharePoint list to help make some of these columns stand out. All right, now I'm gonna show you one last way that you can create a status column. Now I have gone ahead and created my column here and I've called this column completion percentage. Now this type of column could be used to track the percentage of work that is completed on a specific task. Now you can see here that I've selected a number type column and I'll scroll down. What you also want to do is specify a min and max allowed value and you wanna set the min value to zero and the max value to 100. And next you wanna go ahead and paste the JSON syntax in the column formatting input box. Now, an important note, I've included a link in the description below where you can go and grab the specific syntax that is being used in this tutorial. Next, I'll click on OK. And next, I'll click on the name of my list. And you can see here that that column has been added. Now, when I go ahead and click Edit in Grid View and I enter a value into these fields here, what you're going to notice is that they will update and what they'll do is they'll actually show a bar chart in line in the cell. Now what you're seeing here for some reason is that the decimal placement is not lining up. Now I have experienced issues from time to time when using these pre-built JSON syntaxes. So you can see here that I have set my values to be in decimal format and when I do, you can see that the fields will update and display the bar chart accordingly. So you can see that 50% represents approximately half of the width of the cell, 25% a quarter, 47%, et cetera. So this particular syntax is intended to show the value that has been entered in a bar chart that will shade an amount of space in that cell that is proportionate to the actual value. Now, again, you may see some errors from time to time when you're using these syntax. So you want to kind of read through the description and the instructions that are given. Uh, and you also want to try to troubleshoot by doing things like changing the decimal values. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how you can create status columns in a SharePoint list. I also showed you how you can make those status columns visual using built-in no-code conditional formatting. And then we also looked at how you can make your status columns visual by using JSON syntax. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabellis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.